introduce themselves. Um, I will start with myself. My name is Rona Kabue. I take care of diaspora customers at NCBA Bank. Paul. Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon, uh, those who are in Kenya. Uh, my name is Paul Gishero, uh, working with NCBA. Um, I'm the Chief Investment Officer with uh, the Wealth Management Unit. Pleasure. Good morning, all, and good afternoon to our Kenyan colleagues. My name is Benjamin Getonga. I work with NCBA Investment Bank as an investment analyst. Thank you very much. Um, Sam, should we just go ahead? Because we are recording, maybe we could just share it with you a little later, just so that then we're able to save on time. Correct, yes, we can proceed on. Okay, um, so I'll request um, um, Benjamin to start. He will take us through the Kenyan economy and what's going on in Kenya, just for you to know if it's a good time for you to invest, is it a good time for you to come back home? Um, and then feel free to ask questions um, as we go along. And then after Benjamin speaks, Paul will speak also. He will speak on different investment options that we may offer you. And I will also just speak on other investment options that you can, um, you can also be able to consider. So Benjamin, over to you. All right. Rona, if you can share the slide, please. Sure, one moment. Can you see? Just give it, a, give it a moment. Yes, it's visible. I can go to the first one. So I'll be taking you today through the macroeconomic outlook of the Kenyan economy and how then this will shape the investment environment. So I'll begin with, uh, I'll, I'll look at the, the economic growth aspect the interest rate uh, environment, the government borrowing, and how then this will fit into our space. And finally, I look at the equities market. This is the stocks. So to start with, we expect that the Kenyan economy will grow by 6.3% in 2021. This is based on IMF, IMF's most re recent forecast. And this will be underpinned by uh, the reopening of the economy which was largely closed down last year. And this was mainly occasioned by the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. As you can see, uh, last year's growth was quite minimal at 0.6%. So really the, re the reopening of the economy is expected to give a thrust into the GDP growth. However, the downside to this remains the, the, the the lockdowns that we are experiencing from time to time. Recently, we had a lockdown for almost two months, which uh, definitely will throw off the Q1 GDP growth. And if this then recurs with the, within, the, within the year, then this could sort of slow down the economic growth from the projected 6.3% to maybe a lower figure. However, on average, we've seen that the Kenyan economy has been performing quite well, at least in the past five years. Uh, posting an average growth of around 5.2%. Next slide. There we are. So moving on to inflation expectations. Inflation is a key aspect in the economy as it, it then speaks to what investors really expect in terms of returns on the investment. So for inflation this year, we expect that uh, we'll be playing in the upper target band of CBK's inflation target, which is 5% to 7.5%. This is uh, slightly higher than where we were um, the, the better part of last year. The better part of last year being below 5%. And the reason we expect that inflation will be on an upward trajectory, at least for the year, is because of one, uh, the recovery in commodity prices, fuel inflation really plays a big impact in the overall inflation figures for Kenya. And as we see oil price, prices recover, 
then we expect that there will be imported inflation into the economy. The other aspect that will probably drive inflation will be the food basket. Currently, we've been seeing food prices going up uh, month on month, and this has been driven ma mainly because uh, there's been lagged rains. Uh, at least we normally expect rains in, in the Kenyan uh, economy to come in between March and May. This is for the long rains. This was uh, delayed for the, for, for the better part of the, the period, only setting on maybe a month or a few weeks ago. So then this will impact the food cycle and then transfer to the food basket. Another aspect that might lead to an increase in the food basket is the recent uh, review of VAT. Last year we saw VAT reduced because of uh, trying to help the consumers then uh, become protected, protected from the impact of COVID. However, with the, the upward review to 16% in January, we saw prices of various food commodities go up and probably this will then be filter, filtered into the food basket going forward, leading to a slightly higher level of inflation. Next slide. So then how does this shape the interest rate environment? So to begin with, we look at the short-term interest rates as shown by the treasury bill rates. The red curve being the shortest treasury bill on offer, the 91 day. The blue curve being the medium term, the medium term treasury bill, the 182 day, all six months. And the dark curve being the one year T bill, 364 day T bill. So if you look at the, the overall direction of the, of, the, of the graph, you'll see that rates have been rising all the way from mid July last year up to the current level that we are at in. So this has been mainly driven by the government borrowing stance and also investor expectation of interest rates. So as investors expect interest rates to rise gradually, factoring in factors uh, like inflation, then we see them asking for a better compensation compared to what was there before. So this has seen treasury bill rates rise over the period, supported also by government borrowing. Kenyan government has been heavy in terms of domestic borrowing with the overall uh, borrowing target, both external and domestic for the financial year 2020, 2021, being at around 700 billion. Out of this, 530 to 540 billion was to be financed locally. So this speaks to why the government was heavy in terms of borrowing locally. Then with mo most of the funds being only directed to government securities and the government displaying a good appetite, then we've seen short-term rates also rise in tandem. So how do you expect this place to, to pan out at least for the, for the remaining period of the year. We expect that the rates will be at the current levels or slightly higher if the current stance remains. That's the cur current government borrowing stance. However, this could be altered by one, if the government decides to shift to alternative sources of funding. And these alternative sources of funding could be the likes of Eurobond issuances and also concessional loans by the likes of World Bank and IMF, then this could reduce the need to borrow heavily from the domestic market. And then it could put a, an, a, a cap on the upside of interest rates. Next slide. So we continue looking at interest rates, but now from maybe a longer term period, and this is in relation to government bonds. So this is a yield curve showing how the yields have been playing out for government bonds over different periods. So the red curve shows the curve as at the beginning of the year or as at end of last year. The blue curve shows the rates as at end of 2017, and the black curve shows the rates the current level of the rates. So if you observe keenly, you'll see that compared to where we started the year, there's been 
a general uptick in rates all the way from the short end, that's the two year space, all the way to Sorry, just a moment. All the way to the longer end of the curve, which is the 23, 24 year space. Comparing this to the 2017 levels, you'll see that the shorter end of the curve is still higher than the current levels, the current level of interest rates which we are at in. So what does this imply? It implies that there's still scope for adjustments, adjustment of interest rates either upwards or downwards. But what will be the main driver of the interest rates adjustments? As I mentioned earlier, this will mainly be influenced by the gov government borrowing stance and also the level of liquidity within the market. So if government still is aggressive, we could see rates edge higher. If there's no other alternative investment asset other than government securities, then this could also sort of maybe cap interest rates if the government decides to be not very, not very good in terms of giving uh, handsome interest rates. However, if we see competition from, from the private sector, which has been a bit dormant given the economic situation, we could see government also then raise their the interest rate since there's competition for the same level of money. So liquidity needs then come into play here. So if there's high level of liquidity within the market, then rates could be affected to the down to the downside. If the liquidity thins out within the market, rates will be on an upward trajectory. Next slide. So we move on to look at the Kenya shilling uh, performance against the major currencies. And in this case, the major currencies have been the USD, the Euro, and the GBP. I'm sure as an investor, uh, as a diaspora investor, you'll be sending back your dollars home and the conversion rates are a key aspect. So for the Kenya shilling, we expect uh, levels of stability, at least for the larger part of the year. And this stability will be driven by diaspora remittances, uh, uh, recovery of exports. And also there's the aspect that uh, we've been receiving a lot of concessional funding, which will boost our Forex reserves. I'll give an example of IMF funding. Uh, IMF passed uh, a funding of around 230 billion for the Kenyan government for a three year period. Currently we have already received 44 billion as of this week, and this directly contributes into the, for the, the Forex reserves that are held by CBK, and they assist the Kenya shilling in terms of its strength. So these are some of the factors that we expect to help the Kenya shilling stabilize. If you look at the, the graph, we started the year at a level of 109.17 for Kenya shilling against the dollar. Currently, we are at a level of 107.02 against the dollar. So this speaks to the Kenya shilling strengthening over this period of time. And we expect that uh, the shilling should be trading in the range of maybe 107 shillings to 110 shillings, worst case scenario, which sort of speaks to the stability that we are alluding to. Against the pound, the pound is a bit volatile and you'll find that uh, the Kenya shilling against the pound normally oscillates in the levels of minus 2% to probably plus 2.2%. 2, 2 so the outlook for this year is that uh, we're still going to maintain a, a relative stability against the pound, also similar to the dollar. And also this will be also reflected against the euro. Next slide. So finally, I'll have a sneak peek into the local equities market. Our local equities market is, uh, has been performing at least, let's say not very well in the past two or three years. And this has mainly been influenced by outperformance of the developed market equities. equities. If you look at the developed markets, they have been posting good performance in the past periods. And given that these markets are dollar-denominated, uh, they, they offer dollar-denominated returns, 
then this has, this has affected uh, the attractiveness of the Kenyan equities market to maybe foreign investors. However, uh, we started the year on a positive footing. We are recovering from last year's loss. So this has mainly been driven by recovery of uh, prices, given that investors are pricing in positive sentiment on to the company's performance as the economy reopens. So how do we see this playing out during the year? We expect that we'll close at least on, a positive, on, on the positive side for the broad-based index. This is the Nairobi All Share Index. And the performance will be driven, as I said, by positive performance of the listed counters as the economy reopens. How this will mirror the developed markets equities performance? Uh, I think the developed market equities are still performing really strong. And then this poses a challenge for maybe foreign investors who would love to come into the market, but maybe have a short-term view. For a short-term view, it might not be the best placed uh, space for, 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 for investors. However, in the long term, this is something that probably foreign investors will be considering as they try to diversify their risk. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. I'll hand it over to Paul, who will take us through the investment products. Over to you, Paul. Good, thank you so much, uh, Benjamin, uh, for taking us through the, how the economy is performing. Uh, what I'll try to do is uh, take us through what uh, possibilities there are as far as investing uh, in Kenya at the moment and investing through NCBA is concerned. And obviously the best way to start the conversation is to speak to why, you know, why all of us would want to invest in Kenya at any point in time. Uh, obviously, everyone will have a specific objective as to why you want to come back to Kenya in terms of investments. So you probably want to invest because at some point you may consider uh, relocating to Kenya. You're probably investing because you want to diversify your wealth from the US market or the other markets uh, that you could be. You're also looking at uh, diversifying your return, so looking for some kind of Kenya shillings return and also increasing the level of returns because we know as well that for you know, some investments, for example, in the developed world are giving a fairly low return at this point in time. And so the most important thing one always have to think about is what the objective of the investment is before you actually even start you know, evaluating the available investment option. Uh, and then of course, another important aspect is uh, where you are as far as investment is concerned. So at what stage am I in uh, as far as investing is concerned? Have I accumulated enough wealth or am I actually starting the journey of wealth accumulation? All those come to determine uh, at what level, what kind of investments you actually want to go for so that uh, one, they make sense of the objective and then they remain very aligned to the stage at which you are as far as wealth accumulation is concerned. And the other consideration you may have is to also look for investments that are reducing the level of correlations uh, that you have uh, between the current investments that you're holding and whatever else you want to build. So I give an example of, so if all my investments are in um, stocks or listed uh, stocks in the, in the US market, do I want to continue exposing the rest of my wealth in listed stocks in the Kenyan market? Am I creating a systemic, you know, systemic or a systemic or industry risk that will continue, uh, you know, creating volatility in the way my wealth grows? So those elements then come to play in helping us decide what investments should I go for at any point in time, and that is a space that uh, we at uh, NCB Investment Bank are happy to help with in terms of decide, you know, putting all those factors together and deciding what investments or combination of investments should I go for. But now, in a general way, I'll try to illustrate what uh, investments we are giving uh, within uh, NCB Investment Bank. Obviously, we are all well aware of our savings deposits and are all aware, well aware of our fixed deposits. We just want to give an additional array of investments that you can access through us and how then they come to play as far as uh, you know, uh, your wealth creation journey is concerned. And I'll start with uh, what we call the closest to cash investments. These are investments that uh, you will sit comfortable that uh, one, you are not at a risk of losing your principal and are getting fairly predictable, predictable kind of returns. Eh? And uh, you can almost uh, with certainty estimate or project where that investment is going. And those are what we call money market investments. Money market investments, the typical one that we know is that fixed deposit where you come to the bank, 
you give us a uh, 1 million shillings, the bank agrees to give you 8% uh, return, and then you know what date that money will mature. That comes with certainty of uh, maturity, certainty of principle in terms of safety, and certainty of uh, the kind of return that you're getting. But on top of that, then uh, the market has created additional investments in that space. Uh, you, uh, we call, uh, I guess, the more popular term in the, U in, in the West is uh, mutual funds. Uh, so we have uh, what we call money market funds or money market unit trust funds, uh, you know, the language used in Kenya. What this does is uh, to give you an additional investment over and above your fixed deposit that has very similar characteristics to fixed deposits, except that your money is never locked up. So that uh, you can actually come in today, invest 1 million shillings in a money market fund, and then tomorrow you discover that you probably wanted to use that money for a different reason. So the money market fund allows you to take that money out without any form of penalization, giving you the additional benefit of ensuring that a lot of your money is not staying sitting idle and giving you a fairly competitive rate of return. So like currently the return that you're getting on the NCB money market fund is around about you know, 8%, which I think is a good return for money that could as well have sat idle waiting for the next opportunity. So something that uh, I would encourage uh, each of us to try, the entry criteria is also very friendly to anyone in the, you know, or in any stage of the weather accumulation cycle, our amounts are as low as you know, 5,000 shillings to start off and you can load in new monies uh, at any point in time and you can withdraw either in full or partially any time in uh, any point in time. Over and above that, uh, there are treasury bills, which are short-term investment securities, um, which I'm very sure you're familiar with. So the government of Kenya offers three types of treasury bills. There's a 91 days treasury bill, there's a, a six months or an 82 days treasury bill, and then there's a full year or 364 days treasury bill. All these will come with different return characteristics. What we've done at NCBA is to give you the opportunity to enter into this investment without necessarily the need to go to central bank to open your own CDS account, to open your own account and to drop your own you know, instructions as far as a bidding is concerned. So we are providing that extra value to make sure that even as you sit in the diaspora, even as you go through your, your normal busy schedule, you can access some of these government investments in Kenya without even lifting your hand. Just give the money to us as a trusted partner, and then we do the investment on your behalf, and we shall be reporting to you on a frequent basis about how those investments are performing. So that's what we are doing on what we call the money market side, very easy, uh, you know, very easy to get investments. Then uh, to top up or to increase the level of return, uh, uh, you, we can also help you access the treasury bonds market. Treasury bonds, um, different from uh, money market investments because they are fairly long-term in maturity. So we are saying treasury bonds are any investment issued by the government, of, uh, government or any government that has a maturity longer than one year. So here you're talking about, uh, I can go to the government and buy one a bond that has 25 years, 13 years, 15 years, whatever it is. The nature of those is that they pay interest every six months and that that interest is predetermined so that uh, from day one, you know, I'm going to earn interest at, say, the rate of 13%, and you can compute uh, with a lot of precision the kind of return you'll get from those investments. And the same applies to corporate bonds. Corporate bonds, on the other hand, are similar in nature, but issued by, you know, uh, fairly large uh, instit uh, institutions or companies that are seeking to raise money for their own, you know, uh, budget finances or projects that, that, that they are pursuing. Now, one thing you realize the treasury bonds in Kenya, they come in two attributes. There's one that comes at, uh, with a tax element and the others that are called infrastructure bonds that comes without a tax element. So giving you a chance to earn some bit of income that doesn't you know, accrue, accrue taxes uh, you know, uh, from them. And uh, that then helps you start you know, uh, fastening the pace at which you are accumulating you know, your returns or even growing your wealth. So something that I would encourage you to you know, start looking at, one can go directly to central bank if they wanted to buy these bonds, or alternatively, you can use the facilities that we provide within NCBA to actually access that. In essence, for you in diaspora, because I know you won't have the time and uh, you know, the space to actually run to central bank, then we do encourage you to use services like uh, NCBA to actually access those papers. Uh, by their nature, again, if you wanted, if you bought a 15 years bond and wanted to exit uh, because of, uh, you know, changing factors, you can actually sell them in the secondary market. So you are not locked up in terms of holding these investments uh, over the long term. Uh, as Benjamin said, the interest rates are rising. So every new January, we're seeing 
new bonds issued at higher interest rates. So one may consider actually picking up that. In addition, we can help you access uh, what we call euro bonds. These are dollar denominated government securities issued by the government, you know, government of Kenya. So for you, for example, who may have dollar, in, dollar cash flows, it makes a lot of sense to consider investing in euro bonds. And those are facilities we can help, uh, you know, we can offer within the local market. Um, and then increasing the level of risk, uh, you know, that uh, one can be looking at, then you can start looking at the stock market. Benjamin alluded to that the fact that uh, the last two years, I think, uh, by and large, the Western stock markets have performed very well and overshadowed, you know, the emerging and frontier markets. Uh, but then at the same time, the current situation is giving very interesting entry you know, entry prices to get in the, uh, in the local stock market. So you get stocks that would have, you probably have purchased in a normal day for 75 shillings. For example, you're able to access them, access them for way lower, you know, way lower amounts. Um, in this case, for example, I'll just give you an example, say if I want to go buy a share in a, in a Kenya commercial bank, I would probably in a normal day, the price would have risen to 75, but right now I'm getting it for 41 shillings, for example. So for someone who wants to start creating a meaningful, uh, you know, capital gains journey, then uh, it is a very good time to start picking stocks in the market. Now, these stocks can be picked through either going directly to buy those stocks using your own broker. Uh, we have a brokerage business at NCBA. Or you can decide to go in directly because you don't have the time and space to decide which company to buy into. Go through a, a, a mutual fund, for example, that we've created called the NCBA Equity Fund. And uh, there are, there's also you know, a variety of these offered by the local market. So this fund has selected and pre-qualified about 15 different stocks that we have actually created about portfolio out of, and uh, we manage those stocks uh, you know, uh, to decide when to exit and when to, you know, uh, when to invest or when to you know, reduce uh, any kind of weight in the stock. So what that gives you is the, the benefit of co-investing with others and the, the economy of, of scale that come with that huh? and removes you from the need to actually keep an arising. Is Safari com rising? Is it likely to fall tomorrow? Is a NCBA bank stock rising or is it likely to fall tomorrow? And you leave that to a professional manager who will do the legwork of ensuring that that is working, you know, and meeting the objectives that, uh, you know, that, you know, that, that you have. And again, the entry value for in, in, entry amounts for this is as low as 5,000 shillings. If you decide to go through a broker, you set up a brokerage account, which you can also help with, I mean, you can also help with, and then you, uh, instruct your broker to buy particular stocks for you. I'll say there's a whole range now of uh, fairly discounted stocks that one can start taking advantage of. And of course, if you're the more risk, uh, risk, uh, of, uh, you know, uh, uh, higher risk capital type, you can start looking for unquoted stocks. We have a number of uh, stocks in this market that are traded off, you know, off, off the market. The, the idea here is um, you buy these stocks off the market, but eventually some of these stocks may end up being listed, or you're entirely looking to get meaningful ownership in businesses that are being you know, the operational in Kenya, so that you start accumulating over time and eventually you can actually either exit by selling back uh, to the owners or selling back to the open market, or if, if at all ever that, that company is listed, you can actually exit from the stock market. So giving you an, an array of uh, opportunities you can actually utilize to actually start investing small amounts of money through the government, through listed funds, or through the stocks. Lona, next slide. And then obviously there's the opportunity for investing in real estate. I think uh, this is a, a fairly popular uh, you know, uh, investment uh, you know, option uh, for, for the local market. Uh, what you've seen, I think, dynamics in the stock uh, in, in, in the in the real, real estate market in Kenya have been shifting quite uh, you know quite rapidly. I think over time we've uh, by and large been focusing on residential uh, rental investments or actually residential development and sale kind of investments. And I think uh, that space has actually been milked quite a lot, and the returns are actually reducing in a great way. Not saying that uh, there are no opportunities. There are certainly opportunities. What we've seen is uh, there's actually a shift in where the opportunity was sitting. I think opportunities was initially sitting in the middle class, uh, where rental yields were looking really good, almost nine percent, you know, towards ten percent. Those rental yields are starting to collapse, and I think COVID has attributed to that, and the, the you know the reduction of credit has uh, contributed to that. Eh? And so one needs to actually decide what space in the real estate market if you want to remain 
in the residential, uh, you know, uh, segment you want to play. There's a lot of opportunities certainly in the lower end of the market uh, in terms of, uh, because you don't have to spend so much for each residential unit and the kind of res uh, rental yield you get from those investments is actually, you know, very commensurate or reasonable as far as uh, the, the level of investments you have, you, you have is concerned. But alternatively, you can actually look at other different ways of, you know, getting into the, you know, into the real estate market. Uh, I'm looking at, for example, instead of focusing mainly on residential, what other spaces can I look at? Can I look at uh, residential, you know, rather uh, real estate from the aspect of agriculture? What's happening in the agricultural space? Can I look at uh, real estate in the form of land banking? And I think we've done a lot of land banking in Kenya, but uh, I don't think the way we look at it, we probably go for the you know, lowest uh, denomination of land uh, and then hold on to that. Can we look at teaming up with groups and creating land banks? And then out of those land banks, we enhance value. And then from the enhanced value, you can actually raise to the market for to, to make you know, meaningful level of gains. Those are spaces that one can actually start considering, uh, especially for, for, for example, for you in diaspora, you can actually come in as a group to actually start you know, looking at. Then new spaces are arising in retail, uh, office and industrial. So there's a lot of warehousing construction going on. Is that something that I want to consider? Recreation facilities, I think uh, the middle class has been expanding. Uh, there's a shortage of spaces in terms of where they can take their kids for recreation. That's also becoming a major space. Education, for example, another major area that one needs to be considering. Education comes in the form of, you know, what facilities can we provide to, you know, the, you know, the, the, the school going mass? So there's accommodation, these are building, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, again, additional recreation facilities related to education. What space can I actually start playing in that? And I think there's a huge opportunity there uh, to actually look at. You can look at healthcare. I think healthcare, we know uh, the dynamic that uh, COVID has actually brought as far as healthcare is concerned. What I'm saying here is that even as we look at real estate, we probably need to expand our focus and maybe reduce the level of focus that we've had on uh, rentals uh, from a residential perspective to actually you know expanding those opportunities and uh, obviously again when you're looking at uh, real estate our approach generally has been to go it alone as far as investing is concerned but we realize that again i mean for for you in diaspora evaluating which part of nairobi or which part of kenya to invest what kind of investment to do doing the due diligence may not you may not have the space to actually do that. So there's opportunities then in looking at other indirect forms of investments that you can have in real estate. So the rate market, uh, very nascent uh, in Kenya, but starting to offer those opportunities where you know, you're almost getting into, I'll use a typical uh, parlance, chama that buys into property and those properties deliver return. This could be development of properties or other you can develop to develop, or could be properties that are giving you a, a rental income. Or you can actually look at uh, you know indirect project finance, where you know people are running a project, they have the wherewithal, they have the knowledge, and they are looking to beef up their capital. We can start, you can start looking at those, you know, those opportunities. And then, for example, uh, just recently we know uh, a company listed a bond, uh, you know, that's purely based on uh, you know, uh, educational real estate. So they are providing uh, real estate, rather pro providing an investment, an opportunity for you to invest in real estate in a board linked to real estate. Eh? And this focusing on uh, you know, student hostels. And I'm sure you all know about the Econ, you know, Econ uh, corporate, uh, Green Bond. So those are additional opportunities of participating uh, in the real estate market without necessarily have to think do I have to go, do I have the right mass, right amount, right investment amount that I actually need to get to that space? Um, so in essence, what I'll say is there's certainly a lot of opportunities. We are happy to do the hand holding in terms of deciding or rather helping you pick up those opportunities and uh, having conversation as to how those opportunities or how your objectives can actually be addressed by the various opportunities. What I'm again wanna say is that, uh, you know, the entry criteria is no longer so restrictive because you don't have to think about, you know, 100 million, uh, 10 million shillings and all that. You can actually come in at way lower amounts. And just to take again something I forgot to state as I was talking about, uh, you know, money market investments. We also have a money market investment in dollar terms. So that for you who may be having dollars and don't to convert to Kenya shillings, you can still bring those dollars to Kenya and keep them in a money market fund 
uh, in the form of dollars. That gives you a wide array of opportunities to actually think about, to think about as you're thinking about investing. But uh, to conclude, I will say, happy to support you, happy to discuss uh, at any point in time, whatever investments that you may have. And then with that, um, I'll, go, I'll beg to hand back to Rona to take us to the next section. Thank you. Rona? Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much for your um, very elaborate presentation. Thanks also to Benjamin for that. Um, I've seen a couple of questions coming in and I've answered some. Um, also, just feel free to reach out to me and I will give you, I'll connect you to who you need to speak to if you're interested in brokerage, if you're interested in um, I investing in treasury bills or treasury bonds. And if you're interested in just general information with regard to what Benjamin and Paul have spoken about. Maybe in addition, what I could add is that, you know, you could start slowly and starting slowly means you can start by opening an account with NCBA. We offer um, checking accounts and savings accounts. So if you wanted a checking account, then um, all we require from you is a copy of a notarized Kenyan national ID, um, a KRA PIN certificate, one personal size picture, and um, we'll, we'll share with you the account opening details. We'll just share that with you on email and take you through the process. Um, at the end of my presentation, I will um, share the, um, I will share my contacts and you'll be able to reach out to me and I'll give you everything you require to know or with regards to opening an account. So why open a checking account with us? Number one, it's, we don't charge you ledger fees. Ledger fee is a monthly fee on an account. So we do understand how um, diaspora customers or yourselves, how you operate your incomes and having an account back home, you'd rather have one that doesn't have any charges on it. So we don't have a ledger fee on it. And it also earns you a minimum, um, a bit of an interest um, on, the, on the balances that you have in the account. You also get an interest on the savings account. Our savings account are strictly for savings and it's not transactional. So if you want an account where you can do a couple of transactions, then we would recommend that you open a checking account. Um, the other thing maybe I could add on to what Paul was saying is that with regards to also property ownership, we do property, um, we have a fully fledged property finance um, unit that takes care of different kinds of uh, property financing. So if you're looking to take up a mortgage, we're able to support you on that. If you're looking to do a construction um, pr a property, so when you say construction, it could be a single residential unit where you maybe just want a house for yourself or a beach house for yourself and your family. Or if you're looking to do multi-dwelling um, residential. So when you say multi-dwelling, it means maybe a block of apartments. We're able to support you on that. We also do um, plot um, loans. So plot loans, you identify a piece of land that you're looking to own. And I think Paul alluded to it, that we're actually also able to support on that. And finally, we also have a unique product called buy and build. So buy and build means that we finance you to buy the plot of land and also finance you to construct on it and be simultaneously do that as one, one product, as opposed to buying land and then later come and do construction, we actually combine it and have, have it as one product. So you buy, we finance you to buy and finance you to build all at the same time. Um, over and above that, um, I think Benjamin also alluded to the fact that we are able to give um, our diaspora clients um, preferential um, forex rates. So when you're, whenever you want to you know, send some money back home and you want to send it back in Kenya shillings, you'll reach out to us and be able to offer you preferential forex rates. Um, in addition to that, we offer insurance products that are we're able to um, provide various insurance products whereby you as a diaspora customer is able to um, access them. So I'll just give an example. We have medical insurance where you can actually apply for medical insurance for your relatives here in Kenya, and we're actually able to take care of that for you. Um, other insurance products include uh, medical, uh, I said medical insurance, so um, travel insurance, are you traveling back home, you need travel insurance, we're able to extend that to you. Um, with regards to money transfer services, um, luckily when you're in America, you're actually able to send money using SendWave, the money actually reflects in your account immediately. I mean, as soon as you click send, it reflects in your account immediately here in Kenya. And so that's really makes it nice and efficient. And over and above, why NCBA Bank? NCBA Bank offers first class customer service. I mean, call us, we are available to, for you to be available to serve you 24 hours. We have a fully fledged contact center that's open 24 seven. They're available to answer your questions. We also have um, speedy service. 
reach out to us on WhatsApp. I mean, I think I have a couple of you reaching, speaking to me on WhatsApp as much as possible. We try and reach out to you as immediate, as quickly as possible. Um, and I think uh, over and above that, we are able to just offer advisory services that, um, you know, with regard to investment, with regard to many other aspects of your um, interests back home in Kenya. So just feel free to ask questions. There's never a question that uh, cannot be answered. We'll find answers for you. We'll connect you to the right people. And with regard to, you know, uh, facilities like construction, we, we don't leave you to worry about the construction. We're in the construction facility, knee deep in there with you all the way. We have, um, we have partnered with various organizations, real estate developers, contractors, quantity surveyors, all of whom will be able to support your construction facilities here in Kenya. We also have in-house project managers who actually um, manage your project on your behalf while you're away and ensure that whatever you require constructed it actually gets up and it's good, it's good to go at the end of the day. Um, again, the other value that we also offer is the fact that if you're looking to buy a plot of, plot of land, and you know we've had many cases of where the land is not, you know, it's not legit, has issues, we do actually carry out a valuation on the land. And that gives you the comfort that at least the land that the bank is going to finance you is actually good to go in terms of, is it a safe investment for you? Are you invest putting your money somewhere your money is going to get lost or you know, you're going to get conned? So that's where we come in as a bank. Um, we are happy to have you on board. We are happy to constantly have this kind of conversations with you. Sam, we are really appreciate your um, you inviting us to speak today. Um, I will put my contacts on the chat box. Feel free to call me, feel free to chat me, feel free to email me. And let's keep this conversation going. It's your opportunity to invest back home. It's an opportunity to own some property back home. It's an opportunity to diversify your investments as Paul alluded and Benjamin also alluded. It's your opportunity to do great things here in Kenya. We have a lot going on. We have a lot of things that, I mean, are on offer for you. So reach out to us and we'll support you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Sam. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rona, Paul, uh, Benjamin, and uh, everyone who attended. Um, shortly, I'll open up uh, the panel and the forum for questions, just in case there's anyone there out there with uh, questions. Uh, just to mention briefly a uh, backstory, uh, NCBA, and a lot of people don't know NCBA, but they know uh, CBA and NIC. Those two banks merged. And right now we have uh, NCBA. And of course, they brought in the best of the best from both uh, NCBA and an NIC. Um, NCBA is also located in Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya. And they have uh, different um, office locations. Um, and as the present, uh, presentations or the presenters gave us, uh, detailed information on the products and services, money market, uh, fixed deposit, uh, treasury bonds, uh, stocks and bonds. It's a high time for us to invest in those, um, in those uh, services. And I really love the agricultural part and the construction part you guys were talking about, the real estate part you guys were talking about. Sometimes visual, um, Rona, in our groups, maybe you could share, um, you could share like those visual whatever. Um, sometimes it's also good to highlight the success stories. I know in the healthcare field, we are not so much allowed to share confidential information of patients, same with banking, but at least you can talk, oh, there's this guy from Dallas, he's from diaspora, uh, he's constructing 200 units apartments, he got a loan from us, the only requirements were X, Y, Z, so you're able to finance that kind of thing. Because we also tend to, I hate using this word, we also tend to ape, we tend to copy what other people are doing because we are far away. We've trusted our relatives, our relatives for quite a number of time and we've been disappointed. But through a bank, uh, once we start noticing those successful trends and stories, we are likely to, uh, to invest. And uh, how the diaspora mind works is the first presentation uh, is kind of, we have trust issues, let me put it that way. Uh, real estate companies have come here, we've invested a lot and up to now those construction units have never come up. I am still trying to chase those funds. Uh, some of us are not even able to travel back home to verify what's going on uh, because of commitments here and there. 
Uh, so right now, when we start hearing banks, yes, bank is a good thing. The first presentation is kind of like a fact finding. Uh, the more you guys continue having these engagements, because uh, of COVID uh, last year, NCBA was not able to visit the US. Uh, ho hopefully after COVID, you guys can be able to come organize. Uh, I really love the luncheon you guys organized uh, for us in New Hampshire and Boston. Uh, and you also brought in Balozi, that was very good. And then, uh, as I told you earlier on, uh, in diaspora, we have to keep liquid. Uh, when I, what, I, what I mean by that is we really have to work hard, um, do a lot of overtime, uh, maybe have one or two jobs to keep you um, going. Cause you know, our families, especially now even COVID time, they're looking back at us. You know, when someone loses a loved one here, they don't depend. They're like, we are waiting for US to supply all those dollars and that kind of thing. So technically we have to keep liquid to survive, not just for us, but also uh, back home. So the only few places to catch us, um, Zoom meetings are good around 11 o'clock, but most guys are still at their workplaces uh, and we're recording and we make this available after this. But also when you guys plan to visit the US, uh, there are opportunities, especially like on a Sunday, uh, a lot of people, we're still religious. You had to kuacha. So uh, we still attend uh, churches in large numbers. Um, with COVID things change, but uh, it's, by the end of this month, a lot of places are opening up and you know, the large crowds in churches I will still be there. And if you guys can arrange uh, one day, you know, just come to especially Boston, Seattle, California, Texas, Atlanta, uh, spend a whole month, um, month or two in the US uh, and visit these churches. Uh, that is a fertile ground for meeting people, not only just opening account, but also interacting with them, seeing the trends uh, here in the diaspora. Last but not least, uh, Boston Marathon, uh, usually around the month of April, attracts a lot of people. Uh, and also the New, New York Marathon. If you guys can plan an activity, pro preferably through the uh, uh, embassy in DC or California, they'll, they'll be able to give you these logistics and uh, we can get a lot of Kenyans uh, through that. Last but not least, um, we really appreciate your presentation, very detailed. Personally, I don't have a question because um, like you guys simplified everything. And let me say, I've worked with Rona for quite a um, number of times and she's very effective. You send a text and she responds immediately. So if there's anyone here who really wants to open an account, Rona is the right contact. She'll share her information. And I can say NCB is right now, You especially like at 2 a.m. at night when you're awake, you don't have a lot of, uh, you're not too busy at your workplace, call, call NCB, they'll pick up that phone call. And I think that's it from my end. Uh, and it's a good way to begin, as Rona said, just open an account and then they'll get us through uh, the other presentation. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, this will be shared widely. Um, and I really appreciate back to you, Rona, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, for this opportunity. We really appreciate. Um, we look forward to doing more of this kind of webinars uh, with you and the rest of the SAMRAC team. Um, we are happy to do different topics today. Um, we got quite some insights from Benjamin and Paul. Um, if you have any other interests of, uh, uh, that you'd require support in or you require more information about, just feel free to reach out to us. We'll organize, we'll get in touch with Sam and put something together and we're happy to host um, you once again. So we don't get tired of hosting. We are happy to do this as, as often as possible. So with that said, Sam, are we good to go? We can say have a good day to you guys and good night to the Nairobi guys. I'd, unless we have uh, burning questions, any of our guests? Yeah, I saw, I saw some questions on the chat box. Uh, do you want to take care of that? Or oh, they can I just already... go live uh, and ask that question. If that's okay. Yeah, that would be great, yeah. Uh, Ralph, you want to say hi to people if you're still yes, there? Yes, Ralph, hi. Mr. Kilondu, I don't see him. Okay, that's fine. Uh, anyone else with a question? Albert, you wanna say something? Albert is my new friend. <laughs> okay. Albert? No. Ralph, Ralph's hand is up. 
Hello. Hey, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I uh, I joined the call a little bit later, but uh, it, it's always a good thing to see you, uh, Ron, uh, uh, talk to us. Um, I don't know whether this is the right program to say this, but uh, we are working very closely with you as an institution also to introduce certain uh, diaspora products uh, that will also supplement whatever it is that you're sharing here with this particular group. So uh, I, I also want to echo Sam's words when they say that in you, we have a trusted uh, um, in a bank representative from Kenya who we can always trust in. So um, yeah, for me, it's to say uh, it's an honor having you all the time, always in all forums. And uh, I'll get in touch with you as we get ready for IGM next week. And yes, yes I we need that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you yeah. so much. And thank I'll, you, Stan, I'll, I'll for the call. OK, yeah. thank you. Thanks, thanks, Ralph. Thank always. you so much. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anyone else, Sam? Um, any other questions before we close? I was suggesting, um, is it okay, Rona, for you to open a WhatsApp group? And okay, like we have our own NC, diaspora NCBA. No, just, you don't have to do, um, we just brainstorming. Like uh, NCBA diaspora group. And um, if I'm interested in something that uh, NCBA just put me there, someone else is interested, just put. So that when you're sharing information, it's just NCBA related. Um, okay. I, I'm sure you have a database, uh, but these just guys are more easily accessible through and um, WhatsApp. Uh, but yeah. you're doing you're doing a good job. Um, Thank you. Just so about, much, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, I I will respond to you with regards to the WhatsApp. We have a business WhatsApp um, platform that has just been commissioned. I will share with you separately on how it's working, and then also additionally, then we can also um, share it on the group or separately to different individuals. Yes, that's possible. Very good. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Uh, I just want to say you guys have done a brief presentation. I was following through and uh, I really appreciate the information you guys have shared. Uh, I was mostly interested with the stock market, uh, especially the money market funds. And I'll probably reach out to get some more information uh, and see at least some of those questions that I feel like I need to know uh, more details. Definitely, uh, I'll try to reach out to Rona and see if she can conduct me to the right person to help me with that. I also like the product where you said by you can buy and uh, and build. I like that uh, product as well, and uh, that's that's quite quite a good product that I've seen. I don't know if you can hear me more. Or I can see you leaning over. I just, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I'm very much impressed, and I think that uh, I'll be following up with uh, Rona just in case I have some additional questions. But good job. Thank Thank you so much. Thank you, Albert. We'll talk more. We have a lot to talk about on the side. <laughs> sour, sour, sour. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Albert. Thanks for coming. No I think problem. I think yeah. Paul mentioned uh, 15 different stocks. Uh, if you have any more information, you can share it. Uh, and then you also mentioned Acorn Green Bond. Uh, maybe a little bit more about that. Just highlight. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Um, yeah, for, for the stocks, um, as you would imagine, uh, the market is actually very biased to a number of stocks in this Kenya. The Kenyan market is mainly uh, the first major stock everyone knows is Safaricom. And then we have the banking stocks that, uh, you know, that come after that. And then uh, there's a more manufacturing type of stocks. If you think about the, you know, the BATs, the, you know, the EABLs, um, you know, the Bamburis and such. So in total, what we've done is to select the top 15 and have done our own analysis and decided these are good stocks that give us a diversified approach and are giving us a feel of the market at a point in time. Those are what we offer within our fund. I think, uh, you know, in a, in a different way, we can actually send, a, you, know, uh, a, you know, a flyer just showing what are the constituent stocks in our fund. Uh, the Acon, Acon bond, uh, a green bond was actually issued uh, sometimes last year. What, uh, what uh, Acon have done is that uh, they've actually ventured very well in the, in the, in the, 
in the what you call student accommodation space. Uh, interesting enough, I'm marketing for them now. But I'm just I'm probably just go ahead, go ahead and give the details. So what what happens is they invested in a, a student accommodation space. You probably have heard of something called Que2 and uh, another Q. All their all, all their brands start with a Q. So those have been put together as a real estate investment trust. Uh, and they are giving a very a fairly good return. I think I've seen the return is about nine or ten percent, which is a very good return. Eh? But then, for you as a green bond investor, you are actually getting a fixed return uh, from your investment. Uh, and this investment, this return, has actually been uh, given tax exemption, so that the return you're earning from this bond is actually tax exempt, and they'll pay it on a quarterly basis. Uh, they did it as a as a what what we call a medium term note. So they've been asking. As they continue their projects, they come to the market to ask for an additional amount of money that they continue lumping up uh, so that uh, eventually you probably push, you know, push your investment to the maximum that you had committed. And then uh, they'll, start, they'll pay interest on that until then they get to the amortization plan that they have in terms of paying back that, that, that the, money to, you know, the money to the investors. So the good thing is with that is that it's giving you an exposure to the stock, you know, to the, sorry, to the real estate market without lifting a finger to invest you know, you know, in a student accommodation or even build a, you know, build a property. That's, a, that's the nature. And I'm sure another one will be coming very soon to the market, uh, probably later in the year. Um, and I'm very sure, I mean, of course, it's early days to talk about it, but uh, you probably see it uh, in, uh, as the year progresses. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, back to you, Rona. Okay, great. Any other questions? Um... We've done an hour, I think, almost uh, just a few minutes to have, like, I'm exactly doing an hour. Um, I don't see any other questions on the chat box. So we can wind up and then we will share the recording, Sam. We'll re share the recording with you. Please feel free to share it with the rest of the group. We are open, we are available. Feel, feel free to reach out to us for any questions. Um, Asante Sana. Thanks, thanks for hosting us, Sam. We really appreciate it. Anytime. And uh, a feedback I got from one of our, uh, someone who was interested in logging in, uh, a lot of our people do not like the registration process. Uh, I don't know whether it's maybe we're lazy or something, um, but, but I'm sure there's a way you can just send a link where I don't have to put that I'm in New York or Boston or my phone number. Um, but I know for security purposes, it's good to register because uh, you kind of uh, what do you call it? Uh, you kind of uh, weed out uh, the, mm -hmm. the guys who are not good uh, or the hackers. Uh, but if there's a way you can just send a link and you just click and someone enters, that might be better as compared to registering. Um, we, we didn't grow up with that culture, uh, sorry to say, but it's something good, but um, something to consider. Thank you, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Sam. That is um, good feedback and it's duly noted. Our team, who handle um, digital marketing and everything that's digital related are here and we have had. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, having said all said and done, thank you again. Um, we look forward to being another one of these again, Sam. Feel free yes. to reach out to us. Definitely. Um, I, I just also would like to get some clarification. What is the best time? Is now your morning a best time or your evening a best time? Uh, it's tricky. Uh, maybe we could ask one or two other people. Um, it's 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 very tricky. Even there's a, uh, but right now a lot of people are working, mm. or they came from an overnight. They're resting. Uh, so probably, I don't know. Next time we can do like a six p.m. Uh, our time, which will be like mm. four a.m. Yes. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't yeah. know. Or maybe a weekend. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Okay, we did one earlier, sometime early, early March, and we did it um, five a.m. in Nairobi. Yeah. Correct. Yes, which was your evening, we, and we had quite a good attendance. Then Correct. Because, Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe next time we can consider those kind of hours and see if we can reach out to more people. But with the recording, I know we'll get to hear a lot of other um, people reaching out to us. So that still yeah. works out. De definitely. And if there's a commercial like you guys mm. have done, NCBA whatever, open an account, I'd like a nice one, like yeah. a very nice, you know, with a nice, Catchy one. A, a Saudi Souls music playing by <laughs> or something. Yeah. And we keep sharing it and then your phone numbers. Yeah. Trust me, those things work here. Yeah. 
Okay, fine. Okay, um, yeah, good job. All right, thank the, you so the, much. The product is excellent. That much I can tell you. All right, thank here. you. Appreciate it, thanks. All right, thanks. Okay, guys, have a good evening in Nairobi, Kenya. Have a good night. Have a very good day in America, Boston. Uh, we have a lot of Boston, Massachusetts people. Thank you so much for hosting us. And the rest of the greater America, thank you so much. Um, hope to see you soon. Kwaheri, have a good one. Bye. 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 Thank you, appreciate it.